here today with Shelly Norman from My Shrine Designs. Um, and Shelly, I've, I've met, I've known you for quite a few years now, but um, I've only just kind of started to get to know you a little bit better. Okay. And for people that don't know who Shelly is, Shelly is quite an extraordinary woman. She is a force of nature, I will call you. <laughs> 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 you are you're quite amazing like you are just the hardest working woman that i know <laughs> oh <thank you. laughs> i sort of love it so i just get obsessed <laughs> you, you just don't stop you're like i don't know how much energy i don't know how you do it i wish i knew the secret of your energy levels because you just start, like stop, stop. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you know, it's a complete combination of like passion, a pinch of craziness and some pretty good systems out the back that make it flow a little easier, I suppose. It's not actually chaos in the house. It's quite organised. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I just would love for you to kind of tell us a little bit of what you do mm -hmm. um, and how did you come to, to do what you do now? Well, um, I have always been self-employed since I was, uh, since I left university. Um, I've always been a creative director. So I came in through fashion and styling. I had a fashion brand for over 10 years in Australia. Um, we were known for um, painting and experimental techniques on fashion. So I used to do big scale art and really feminine art and then work out different ways to apply that to clothes. And in that process, I fell in love with manufacturing techniques. Lots of our garments had 17, 22 processes. It was quite complex fashion at the time. And I was in love with all the different chemicals and the different, um, you know, manufacturing techniques, screen printing techniques, fabrics, applications and things. So in that, I learned how to systemize creativity. And so I was actually more of a storyteller than anything else. I came less from the fashion angle and more from the narrative perspective. And so I spent um, many years in China honing my manufacturing techniques and production skills and and also bringing products to market that were that I got told a lot of the time weren't possible. And I learned how, I learned how to um, manipulate manufacturing techniques really to create really new products and so interiors and construction and architecture is actually very similar you have like set principles and all of those sorts of things that we like to you know play with and change the method to create really unique spaces so I suppose we're more of a um, storytelling narrative company that creates like really unique concepts for retailers or restaurants or villas. And then we apply very unique manufacturing techniques to give people their own individual um, aesthetic footprint that can't really be copied as easily as others. So we work a lot with resins. We work a lot with metal work. We have some incredible artisans here that we use. So we're all about creating brands and creating concepts that are um, that we use our manufacturing understanding and also budgets because you know creative projects need to have budgets. So we know how to use different techniques and bring projects in on budget on timeline. So for us, it's one big pulsing organism that we create different things from. So yeah, that's sort of our background and my background and how I ended up here making spaces. <laughs> What's your, um, what, what is your, obviously you're the creative director, what is your role in the company? Um, do you just come up with the concepts or? or Look, or in the company, we have a pretty tight team. Um, we have, uh, you can see in the background, my head architect and my um, second in charge architect. We have furniture designers and all of that sort of, Thing. But what I tend to do is we get a brief off a client. Um, I'm the creative director and what that means is I tend to channel what they need and how to make that unique, unique and how to make that um, a business for them. So it's really important that the companies work that we're with. So what we do is 
we work out well, who their crowd is, what their target demographic is, what their price point is in their food or beverage or hotel, and we create an experience for the, the people attending those venues by, um, yeah, creating really unique visuals. It's also about the flow of the venue. So in here, I work obviously coming up with the aesthetic, but it's quite a, you know, I would say it's quite a spiritual process and quite a um, detailed process where we need to get into our clients' thoughts and how their businesses work. And I work with them to draw as much information out. And they're really my inspiration more than anything else. It's like, I've got to take this client and take their idea and push it further and make the the um, space work for them. So yeah, I'm, I don't know, I channel them. <laughs> I channel the interiors, I would say, from a different place. And I also, <laughs> yeah, and so, I mean, I'm the creative director in the company, meaning that I come up with the idea and I bring it in. But the people in the background of this company and the architects with their technical knowledge and our structural engineers and our MEP engineers, they have incredible knowledge that help us execute these projects that are quite complex. So I would say it's one big team here and I couldn't do it without their brain power. And yeah, they, we work together. So I have a lot of... Um, Pardon? That, that's also that's also a skill in itself to be able to find people that complement your skill set and enhance it more than anything. Yeah, look, honestly, when you're running projects of the scale that we do and we run them all the way from the initial seed idea right through to the production, styling, execution, we even do the uniforms, the napkins, like we have every detail covered in there. Um, it's from my experience that... Um, a project has its own um, life force and you need to read it as you go through it and they go through phases where things flow and other things don't flow. For example, you're doing a big job and the budget isn't working. Then that's also a sign for us that we need to change the direction a little bit and downscale it. So um, we rely on some pretty amazing brain power in the back end to work out what things cost, how to create different structures, different designs and bring them in on point. So, yeah, it's a real organism in here, like a, a functioning ecosystem, design ecosystem. <laughs> How long have you had this company for now? Um, I've been in Indonesia for 12 years and the, you know, it's, we're in the first few years we were, it was more of a creative love. We do a few projects here and there, but we also had the fashion retail business still running. And then, um, in the last 10 years, things have really sped up for us and we've done some of the more beautiful exotic projects here. So yeah, it's taken me 10 years to curate, um, to hone our skills and to bring together a team of what we have and have, yeah, that's how we create these processes because we've learned each other throughout the years. Yeah. What's, what's your favorite um, project you work so far in? Like or either, either the, the, enjoy of the, the joy of the process itself or the end results? Which one would be your like, oh my God, this, I just love how it looked at the end. Um, the whole process was beautiful. Um, that's a really interesting question because every project has a unique aesthetic. As we said, we don't do one particular style. We can do any style. So for me, actually, every job has a lot of joys. But honestly, um, the ones where the clients are really, like, allow me to get into their head and also allow me to be free in the process. So I have one... Um, I have a couple of very special clients that I work with that have complete trust in me and I love, you know, obviously Thomas is, um, he's got a real kindred bond with my creativity and he lets me run wild. So I do really love Alma that we did for him because he pretty much gave me the brief and walked away and then when it was done he was in love and excited and yeah, I, I love that project. I also love a lot of our residentials recently. We did a a beautiful home for a client here and they just had complete trust in me and we did a really um, over-the-top kids area and just watching people walk in and burst into tears when they see our spaces and then call us and say oh the house with the bedroom was so good we've made a new baby in there and all of those sorts of things <laughs> what makes, the, makes the project and the process really lovely you know? so I got um, yeah 
I like, yeah. We have a happy, we have happy days most days. We love it in here, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Places are really just absolutely incredible. Like the level of detail on some of these projects, if, if anyone comes to Bali eventually, they should go and have a look at Alma. Um, I know Motel Mexicola was a collaboration with uh, also James Brown and some other people, but the level of detail, I can see you in that level of detail because I know what you do from the plates, like you said, to the napkins, to the uniforms, to the tiles on the wall, they're hand painted and, and you go and source these things from, I don't even know where you're going. <laughs> where you get on <laughs> or you just manufacture it. You know, it's in insane it's insane it really yeah. is insane i don't want anyone in the world <laughs> for like, us like a good one's like you know type five five which is um you know ninety thousand bottle lids in the floor we actually made hand mosaics with laser cut acrylic you know we've got lots of light boxes in the ceiling and laser cut glass and look it's a real manufacturing um execution with creative ideas and inspiration and yet you got to be a little nuts to take it to that level on everything so we just <laughs> <laughs> it's like literally i'm like i cannot believe you did this like it's another level <laughs> thank you so much yeah i mean it's really i mean this it's a company but it's a I love what I do. Every single day I'm yeah. really in awe and we come up with some ideas and right now we're working, um, you know, to share some stuff. We're doing some amazing like ceramic stuff and we're working with putting resin layers into tiles and you look, I love just the playing around and creating these spaces and I like when you get to tell such a story like with Type 5.5, I really like Channel Bangkok dirty Bangkok and just taking that to you know a different place and we we try as our inspiration to be authentic so I feel like in life there's a lot of detail so that we that just makes the actual experience so I try and bring all of that in there and yeah <laughs> yeah your, your creativity is off the charts like I you know I there's obviously a lot of creative people in Bali but I don't think I know anyone as creative as you oh, because that's so sweet. <laughs> it, it's amazing like you walk into these places and you're like oh my god you are not <laughs> <laughs> oh, making me blush <laughs> this and that and this and that and that and you're this is like your eyes is like going to like you know <laughs> Yeah, it's really interesting, you know, you say that because, you know, Clay Bones is one we recently did and um, it was such an interesting process with them because when I met Rod, he was like so 70s and cool and laid back and every time he turned up at a meeting, he had like this semi-floral print on and then when I met Brian, the other owner, he was this cool Navajo-inspired guy and so... I'm creative, but I'm really pulling from my people the inspiration. So I wanted to create this modern, twisted, surf, Navajo space. And so we don't really um, photocopy or copy anyone else. What we're doing is we're pulling different genres and creating our own genre. And I'm not, I don't believe you should follow trends. You know, I don't want to read the next magazine on what trends colors are coming through. I think you should feel what's appropriate and make spaces that are both timeless and somehow trends will pop in there all, like naturally, you know, you don't mean it to happen, but it happens. And so, yeah, it's just for me when I get into the process, I really, I like making people happy when they walk into the spaces, really. That's the inspiration for me. And it's, yeah, I think you do. It's impossible <laughs> not to find places. They are, and in awe of 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 the the amount of work and detail that goes into each place. It's like I think. Well, I'm into interiors, obviously, so I I really appreciate it. 
Uh, <laughs> but even I think people that are not in that world, they also get to appreciate it no, because you can not, not appreciate it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Look, I just hope people have nice experiences and happy memories in our spaces. That's the main goal. And um, look, we're not creating from like an ego state. Like I love when people compliment us and stuff, but the real, as you probably know, I'm much more behind the scenes than, you know, I, you know, I just got an Instagram account, for example. <laughs> so um, yeah, for me, I've just been totally in love with the process my whole life. And I love making spaces that people are happy with. So it's just about the authentic, using the like crazy techniques I can work out in my head and, you know, semi-technical, semi, you know, airy fairy brain and bringing it into like a space that people can enjoy. So yeah, I, I love it. And I, you know, honestly, I love my team a lot too, you know, every day in here, just, um, you know, navigating business and navigating how to look after people. And I know that sounds crazy, but I actually believe that's part of the process. And my team are just, yeah, I love what we do. And I love our little family in here. It's very special. Do you think, um, do you think that uh, Bali really has um, propelled you to be, like you always sleep in incredibly creative. You've told me a little bit in the past about your fashion business that maybe we'll touch in touch into in a few minutes but do you think Bali really propelled you to just go nuts and say you know it is like a playground here where you can if you have the vision and the creativity you can achieve anything really yeah I mean the beautiful thing about Indonesia that I would say is the artisans themselves are incredibly talented people a lot of the old school techniques like we mentioned ceramic work uh metal work uh resin work, all of the clay work, all of this stuff is very accessible here. And um, the artisans have been trained for years and years. It comes through family lines a lot of the time. So you're really dealing with beautiful skill level. And the nature of both the Javanese and the Balinese workers that we um, we use for a lot of our projects is there's a lot, there's not a big rush and a impatience around their work. They love creating things. It's not like everyone's on the clock all the time. It's actually part of the process to love your work. And so, you know, things go wrong every day, but we um, work with those things, you know, it's, there's a level of patience to resolve the issues. So I love Bali and I love what you can create here and the there's it's literally limitless I mean I was in China for five years and I really enjoyed the manufacturing there it's a whole different um engine from here but here the um the the one-off pieces the small volumes the um you know you can make a set of ceramics for one restaurant here you can make it for one house I mean one house we recently did we surprised the owners that all the um plateware had their own initials on the other side so it was like a family crest I mean just to have that accessible to you and be able to still like I know this is boring but bring the project in on budget and not blow all the numbers and everything like that it's amazing to be able to do that in this um, country I have I'm constantly inspired by what we can do here you know I could go on and on about it <laughs> yeah it's incredible and the just be able to to create these things and in other places you can we could only dream of it just would not be possible yeah I mean, you know here you can make it possible it's really like you know building your own home you have a vision to customize a tile you're being able to do that i mean the the lim the options are like just so broad and bringing those stories together with the manual it's such a satisfying line of work you know when the lights go in and you've been to the fabric market to pick the fabric in the light and you've been to the metal house to pick the metal and then you know you've worked with the you know the electrician to work out which way you want to wire it and then it goes up it's like heaven <laughs> like really <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you, how, how did you end up in Bali? How? 
Um, I ended up in Bali because I had the manufacturing um, based in China. I had manufacturing based in Australia for quite a few years, and then some of the production got bigger volume, so we moved some of it to China in the early 2000s. And then I was really missing the artisan techniques of like small volume work, like hand stitching and hand beading and... Um, so I wanted to get some of that back into my product. And so I came here as a research trip and I started doing some um, discovering the manufacturing. And so that's how I came here in 2008 to research different manufacturing techniques. And we worked a lot with um, hand painters painting garments. We worked a lot with uh, croang, like which is hand embroidery with all the holes through it. Yeah, we um, did some incredible one-by-one screen prints where every swing tag had its own message to the customer. I just loved the level of customization here and um, I fell in love with the place and the people and the lifestyle. So I got stuck. (laughs) You never left. I know. I know. My family would like me back home, but I'm just... I feel a little selfish some days because I'm so obsessed with the creative process that I love it here. And uh, they keep trying to lure me home, but it hasn't happened to date. (laughs) Where are you originally from? I'm from Sydney. I grew up, I actually, um, yeah, I was, uh, grew up in Sydney. I spent a fair few years in Bondi um, at Bondi markets and selling products there. They were very happy days also. And then, yeah, five years in China. Pardon? I probably was there by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Yeah. And so you came to Bali 12 years ago. Yeah. Part time. Yeah, I was here on and off in the beginning. And then we um, look, we, there was a big economic crisis in 2008 that was very difficult on everyone. And I decided just to um, consolidate and um, we built some retail shops here um, back in the day. Then I set up a shop here called The Store and one called Ever After. Um, they were specializing in customized vintage. So we would take dresses and alter them one by one. And we also still uh, did a lot of manufacturing as well. Um, But what happened was when I built the stores, everyone wanted the concept and the real estate. So I ended up, (laughs) we got flooded with inquiries for the actual interior design, which is my background anyway. So we started doing projects. Yeah. That's how it started. Yeah, that's how it started. It was really organic. So... I, uh, you know, I built the shops and then people would contact us for the space and we were sort of at the boom, I think, you know, Facebook and Instagram sort of happened around 2008, 2009, 2010 and we were like the first really visually intense interiors and so it really worked for us. Um, We had people, you know, coming to the shop to do photo shoots and photographing themselves from the outside. So um, that was the beginning of it, yeah. And then uh, we worked a bit on the, yeah, lots of projects over the years. But some of the earlier ones, I'm, I was still honing my skill. I'm not as proud of some of the earlier ones as I am of the ones now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's okay. Like, it's, you know, that propelled you to something else. So, you know, you have to start somewhere. And it's okay to look back and say, yeah, probably it's not as great as you know, I could do so much better now, but yeah. you know, you have to start somewhere. And, and, and I think, you know, a lot of creatives, um, in general, they just want to be perfect from day one. You know, uh, a lot of creatives have very high expectations of what they want at the beginning of their career. And you kind of, you can't jump from one here to be there. You have to kind of have that process of learning and discovering and, you know, seeing what other people are doing and, 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 and uh, how do you say it, refining your craft. Yeah, evolving, like, you know, evolving what you do. And it's a, it's a real process, I think. I, I mean, I've learned so much along the way and I've made a lot of mistakes. And, you know, I think some of the mistakes have turned out better than the actual design in the first place. You know, sometimes the, desi- the, the errors are as good as, you know, it's all part of it. So... We, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big believer in systems and procedure and, um, yeah, the production 
for me is, you know, really important to understanding your skill and your creativity. So for me, getting into that productive level of production and the workhouses and then honing your skill within those spaces and also finding the people that you have good magnets with, that it works. You know, at the moment I'm working with this amazing female welder here. She has such a sensitivity to metal. It's just such a, it's such a gift. Um, so, and then when you see what that person can do and you spend enough time with them, you can push that technique somewhere else. So it's really learning your people and learning the skills and taking risks and allowing enough time in the production to make a few errors so you can actually execute. So, yeah, I totally believe that what you're saying is true and you evolve as a designer and everyone around you, including your clients, including your um, your craftsmen and they, and including the budgets, all influence the project as it evolves throughout the thing. It's like people say, "How many revisions do you give?" And when you do a design, I say, "We don't do revisions; we do evolutions." <laughs> it just evolves and evolves and evolves. <laughs> I like that. I like that because it's. Um, I am quite. It's funny because we have changed my house. I guess still changing it. <laughs> I'm still at that point. Yeah. I'm supposed to be moving two months. I'm still changing things, you know, because for yeah, and and my architect, thank goodness, she thinks the same way as I do. She's like, I can't choose the the wall color until I know what it looks like outside because that will influence, you know. And the builder is like, we just want to pay now. And she's like, don't even don't even ask me. That. Okay, I don't even. <laughs> yeah, me. No, that's. I mean, and I. I believe that what you're talking about right there is the difference between good design and great design because a lot of people these days are going up with CAD and SketchUp files and they, um, they're going up with CAD and SketchUp files and they're, um, they're, then they don't go into the project and feel it breathe and feel the energy of it. And you know yourself making those changes takes a lot more effort and a lot more passion and like a few heartaches along the way, like the paint colour, no, rip it out, no, it's wrong. But, you know, we design once in, you know, SketchUp and then again when we walk through the space and then, you know, even like as the, you know, customers enter and we watch them gravitate to one, then we'll tweak the styling a little bit. It totally evolves and like you can't feel a space until you're in it. And you can't know a space until you see people walk through it and how they function in it and where they feel comfortable. So I'm with you. They evolve and don't feel bad about that. Keep just, <laughs> just I always feel like, let me make my decisions. Well, I I'm yeah, and I'm, and I'm glad the architects I chose is on the same page as me because there are other architects. She's, and we were just discussing this with her because we said, is it that you're like me and her and you? Now we just need to... You know, like we need to see it. It's like when you know you go and buy a piece of furniture, and I said to my husband, he was like, "Where do you want me to put it?" And I'm like, "Well, I need to see. I can't just make a decision now. It's gonna go there, you know." And he was like, "No, no, you tell me." And I'm like, "No, no, it doesn't work like that. I need to put it there. If if I like, if it not, I'm gonna put it there." (laughs) But you're a school (laughs) artist as well. I mean, you're the most amazing photographer and stylist, and I look. You're a full artist, so we have to be in our spaces and play with our things and, like, you know, that's when we're actually, like, I don't want to imagine, that's when I'm my happiest, when I'm fluffing around. (laughs) Maybe it's a female thing. I I know a lot of architects that are male and it's very much what they draw. They get, like, one or two revisions and that's it. And, yeah, their stuff is amazing. Not, Not comparing, but it's very, this is what we're doing and this is what it gets done. You know, there's no, I mean, maybe, it's, I don't know if it's a female thing. I, I, I'm wondering because you're the, like me and my architect is female and I'm also the same. I'm like, I just need to go to the space, feel, I know it sounds so ethereal, but you really do. You need to feel how the outside reflects the inside and how, you know, like I have my house, it has all these green, um, the rice fields. Yeah, which changes the whole reflection of, you know, like how you see the color and, For you know, sure. you can't just set up, I'm just doing this and that's it, you know? No, it's, and I mean, it's a little bit like, 
you know, well, I think houses used to be almost trophies too. They would be like, you know, I've, I'm this successful and I've made this trophy and there was a lot of ego in the process where now we're coming into a new era where comfort is luxury, being really comfortable, having good memories and experiences in your home are the most important thing. And so that's a different way of designing. It's designing from the human experience. And I'm seeing that is like what's most important now is I want to make a beautiful looking home, but I want my families to have a beautiful time in their home. I don't want the, you know, the living room to be so small and the kids not to be able to run around. I don't want the kitchen to be so clean and sterile that you don't feel like you can make a mess in there. I think that's the new, yeah, the new way of designing is for experiences. And so when people leave, they have happy memories. It's like, I don't know many people that walk away and say, that house looked good. I had a good time. You know, that it's not always about the aesthetics that relate to the experience. So if you know how to design for, for someone, you're actually watching their level of joy in a space. It's very different. And bringing aesthetics experience all together into one package is actually and I would say I know I come back to it but projects on budgets for me that's part of it too like bringing in all the elements of a project together to make people have good memories that's that what that's what makes happy homes and that's what makes good restaurants you know You know, the budget, people are like, oh, you know, budgets. But actually, I think budgets adds another creative element to to the whole thing. When you have a budget that's this much, like, it actually push you to be more creative and be more resourceful. When you have a limited budget, I'll just put some marble here, marble there, blah, 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 done. You know, it's kind of, in a way, it's not limiting, but... It downgrades your creativity. I think when you have certain budgets or things you have to stick to, you, you have this much. Okay, so from here to here, I have to be creative. I have to think, how am I going to make the most amazing space with this much? Yeah, I mean, when we get given a project and, you know, somebody says to us, our budget is X amount, what we then consider is what, project can we execute fully with the everything done what materials can we cost in what can we use to make that project have its own narrative but leaving like the parameters of the project are like uh, you know it sounds a bit crazy but the spiritual guidelines so when you get given like you know a budget that's x amount you get given a brief off the client you, of course, you want to push it further and take them to a new experience and a new level that they couldn't imagine themselves. But those parameters create the footpath you should follow to create the design that you need. So if you get a, a smaller budget sometimes, then you need to pick techniques that you can use and execute well and tell their narrative. If you pick, like you said, marble or, you know, brass plated things and you can't execute their idea and not make it look comprehensive for that, then you've taken them down the wrong path. So <laughs> for me, that's a really big part of um, it. And also when we get given that, those details, we can, it actually inspires us. Okay, well, I've found this ceramic guy and he does, I really want handmade tiles, but if I actually cut the tile myself and I hand glaze it, then I can bring it in on budget. And, okay, look at this hand glazing I can now do and it's amazing and it looks even better. So if you follow the parameters, you can be take it to a different place. I was going to ask you, you, you talk a lot about the kind of the process of meeting all this, um, working with all these you know, people that want to build as a spiritual process. And I think you you sound like you're very empathetic and very open to, you're obviously a very good listener because you must sit with them and understand them and not just understand what they say, but also observe what do they look like, how do they feel, what do they want to experience yeah. uh, in their house or their or their retail space or their restaurants do you think um is that the secret of your success 
I think that's a, great, that's a big part of it. I think honestly being like, you know, reading your clients, um, listening to their needs, everyone wants to be heard. Also listening to your manufacturers, if they look like they're confused or looking like they don't understand the brief or um, also in here, um, you know, yeah, it's reading people all round and following the signs and knowing when to push against it, knowing when to say no if it's in the best interest of the client or the best interest of the project and knowing when to be difficult to push a boundary. Like, I don't want to say yes to everything because it's the easiest path. I mean, I create myself a lot of headaches along the way. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's definitely reading the situation, reading the signals, um, being... Um, yeah, empathetic towards the customer and what they need. And, yeah, it's definitely like I definitely feel like there's a little bit of therapy and a little bit of, uh, you know, channeling in, in what we do. I mean, yeah, that's what makes it unique and that's what, you know, that, yeah, it's the joy and the success that makes us happy and have, you know, the continual drive to keep going and love what we do. So I love when our clients love it and I love when we hear them. So, yeah. And I love when they walk into their homes, like, you know, I've got one client here who's not here and um, he's been away for the whole year. We've built him an amazing home. But, um, you know, he is a fabulous New Zealand surfer and how do we bring him to a really creative, beautiful aesthetic and we don't want to push him too far, but we also want to make him feel comfortable. But he actually really aspires to beautiful, arty homes. So running that line with him has been a real process. And how much do we, uh, how do we make him feel comfortable in the decision when it's quite risky for him to add, like, you know, I don't want to do art on the walls. I want to do all vintage sign work. And, and he's like, oh, my God, Shelley, this sounds like an art gallery and not a home. What are you doing? And so things like that, um, yeah, making people feel safe and then also making sure that the content of those images are very, you know, make him feel comfortable and happy. So, yeah, it's a process, real process. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about Bali. Um, I want you. I want to hear your experience about living here and and just you know why is it so special to you? Look, I think when we all move to Bali, you can go through really good and bad times. It's like the island of Scorpio when things are really, really good. They're really, really good, and when things are really bad, you really are going up the river the wrong way. Um, I have found Bali really interesting. When I arrived 12 years ago, it was much more cowboy town than it is now here. I've really enjoyed the evolution of Bali, like even having you here, you're such a professional. And when we work on projects, you know, it's very, you know, very clear communication. It's very professional. It's very, I'm loving the evolution of Bali over the last five or six years. I feel like we have some real intellectual brain power here. We have some real creatives doing new things. We have people pushing boundaries. Um, in the beginning, I loved it because it was like the wild, wild west. And to get a coffee, I had to run five kilometers in the morning and literally. And um, it was quite like being like one of the early, you know, early, you know, groundbreakers and things like, you know, finding uh, a knit house. I remember like going down dirt roads and turning up at this knit house and there was, you know, mice and rats and you get <laughs> 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 And then I, I feel like Bali, you know, for us um, who have young families here yourself, we're really supported. There's a really beautiful sense of family. Um, I'm totally on their wavelength in terms of the spiritual, um, you know, I love, I'm very in awe of the way the Muslims and the Hindu coexist in such a beautiful way. It's one of the joys of my day. You know, it really shows you, you know, when it's Ramadan and all the Bali staff up their hours to help me get through in here and, and vice versa. Or I think that it's a beautiful coexistence of spirituality and everyone respecting each other in lots of ways. And that's, very important to me i i love that and i love that my son speaks javanese and you know balinese but before the time he's four i think that um it's a very special space and you know it's for me i it's like the island of it's 
got a lot of karma here, you know, so if you have good ethics and you keep your feet in the ground, then it's a beautiful place to function. So I I'm love Bali. I know a lot of people view it as like a cheap tourist destination, but for me, it's so far from that. I don't even see that side of it. I don't see board shorts. I don't see that. I just see people like yourself, amazing creatives, creating soap brands, ceramic brands, fashion labels, building exotic homes. I just am, you know, totally in awe of the people around me and the, the, the brain power and the sense of um, not caring what everyone thinks. They just go out and do what they what not having the the necessity to have the traditional things that everyone has back home you know cars aren't as important here homes are more expendable here you can swap you know it's a different space so i love bali for that and i love the diversity of the people here and their free nature yeah <laughs> well i think that's a great way to finish the interview <laughs> Thank you so much, Kelly, for being so available. We had some technical issues <laughs> throughout and before. <laughs> so thanks so much for being so patient with me. Um, you're amazing. I really respect you, just so you know. I really respect you as a person and also what you do. Um, and I will put on the show notes afterwards uh, the links to Shelley's website and Instagram so you can see and check how amazing her work is. And if when you come to Bali, you should definitely go and check these places so you can see the level of work, detail and creativity that goes into each of her projects. Thank you so much, Shelley. Thank you. We love you too.